very pleasant good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. As always, we invite you to bring your own petitions and to make those part of the special intention of the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. As many are aware, we woke up yesterday to the news of renewed and expanded conflict in the Middle East. Hamas and Israel are at war once again. And so we want to add that situation to our special intentions this morning as we pray for peace and goodwill 
for this conflict, as you and I know, has the potential to impact the whole world. So let us, in a moment of silent prayer, bring before God this situation and the other issues in our lives this morning. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Or collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Receive all prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You 
you are Lord God our Lord, you are Lord God the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now have our readings from Scripture. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Exodus, 20th chapter, beginning to read at verse 1. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firm firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their song has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep as he set a pavilion for the sun, it comes forth like a bridge groom out of his chamber. 
It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and give light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than money, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in Paul's letter to the Philippians, the third chapter beginning to read at the verse four. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumstance on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrew, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a prosecutor of the church, has the righteousness under the law blameless. Yet whatever again I had these, I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that come from the law but one that come through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering and becoming like him in his death Somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but his one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and steering forward to what lies ahead, press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner, and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing in his blood. Hi. 
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they were treated in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. And when the owner of the vineyard comes, now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, our Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 21, verses 45 and 46. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The confrontations between Jesus and the religious leadership of his day are becoming increasingly hostile and threatening as Jesus' earthly ministry is nearing its end. The words and actions of Jesus throughout the towns and villages have generated quite a following, and it is all coming to a head within the walls of the capital city of Jerusalem and in the temple itself. Jesus had become an obstacle, a threat to not only the status quo and the power and authority of the elite, but also to the fragile peace of the community. It was only a matter of time before all this caught the attention of the Roman authorities and then the real problem would start. 
There can only be one inevitable outcome to this drama. The elimination of the source of the consternation, Jesus himself. It was time to put the plot in motion. Time was of the essence. But so was the timing. The leaders recognized the need for caution in the execution of the plan to get rid of Jesus, lest a bad situation was made all the worst. Matthew, in his gospel narrative, wants us to be fully cognizant of what is developing. After all, the members of his own community, at the time of the writing of the gospel, were themselves going through persecution at the hands of both Jewish and Roman authorities. Perhaps Matthew felt the need for them to understand the root cause of their own predicament, that their suffering was an extension of what their Lord went through a few decades before. In today's Gospel reading, the confrontation between Jesus and the religious leaders is framed in the context of a story, a parable that Jesus tells. It is a story ripe with allegories that the leadership rightly perceived as references to them. Indeed, it is a metaphor for events yet to unfold and paints the picture of a dire and deadly outcome. In symbolic language, each of the characters in the story represents a recognizable entity. The owner of the vineyard is God. The wicked tenants are the religious leaders of the day. The vineyard is Israel. The slaves sent to gather the owner's share of the harvest are taken to be the Old Testament prophets. The son is Jesus. And the new tenants whom the vineyard, to whom the vineyard is given likely represent Jewish converts and Gentiles who became a part of the Jesus movement. In this regard, the parable appears to be straightforward. Yet such an interpretation puts our understanding of God in an interesting light. On the one hand, God must be seen as an enormously patient and to some extent a rather naive Lanovo. After several episodes of brutality and murder, the logical thing to do would be to correct course, to change the strategy or approach to the situation. Instead, the owner sends more and more individuals into the vineyard to suffer the same fate as their predecessors. On the other hand, God ends up looking merciless as he moves in and cleans house, having had enough of the mayhem. None of the corrupt and criminal tenants are spared. They are all destroyed. This understanding or conclusion may suit many of us when we consider our own idea of Judgment Day, what that Judgment Day will be like. Consistent with that idea, fire and brimstone await a good number of us. But is that what the story is all about? Is that the only conclusion to reach? I contend that an awareness of the context in which the Gospel of Matthew emerges and the community to which it was originally addressed is profitable for a deeper appreciation of this parable. Matthew, writing to a community of second-generation Christians who lived through and survived the destruction of Jerusalem and the Temple by the Romans in 70 AD, is attempting to help them make sense of their awful experience. The mention of a rejected cornerstone crushing and killing some may very well have been the result of those haunting and seared images of the rocks and pillars of a destroyed temple falling on those trying to flee the destruction, the devastation. For a predominantly Jewish audience to whom Matthew writes, the destruction of their holy city, Jerusalem, and the temple, likely reminding them of past events in their history, 
such as the time of the Babylonian captivity, when the city and temple were similarly destroyed. Once again, it was interpreted to be the result of their rejection of God, specifically, in this instance, their rejection of God's Messiah in the person of his son, Jesus the Christ. Consequently, the Christian movement would rapidly spread among the Gentiles, of course. However, we, are yet to, we yet do a disservice to our understanding and interpretation of this story, preserved for us by Matthew, by simply offering what, in my mind, is a plausible reason for the preservation of the story in the first place. It is useful to know that context for sure. This story, this parable of Jesus, is also about our stewardship of what God has entrusted to our care. It addresses the decisions we make in the exercise of that stewardship. And it reminds us that those decisions, like many of the other decisions we make, have consequences, sometimes deadly consequences. Today, we are seeing this play out in the physical world as we face a global climate crisis. So much of it our own doing. Mother Nature is rebelling and God is patient. Or even the conflict that we woke up to yesterday, a stark reminder of the world, the kind of world we live in. This story, this parable, also warns against pride, selfishness, greed, jealousy, the quest for power, the desire to be manipulative and dishonest, matters of a more spiritual nature. It calls on us to avoid such pitfalls, lest we end up in a place from which there is no return. Even then, we will not be able to blame God or accuse him of being cruel, unfair, or unjust. With such an awareness, my friends, we must hear Paul's words in our epistle reading this morning. Paul writes in the letter to the Philippians, Put, Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, but that which comes from the law, that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. And he concludes by saying, This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. End of quote. The new tenants in the vineyard, you and I, who have been grafted in and given the opportunity to be a part of God's kingdom, must press forward with the work that lies ahead, showing ourselves grateful for what God has done for us. Yet, as we look at the scenes from the Middle East over the past 24 plus hours, we are once again powerfully reminded of a conflict that has its genesis and continues in the very land, the very place from which comes our gospel reading this morning. Our prayer for peace is unending. Our fight for justice continues. May God in his grace and love be our source of strength at times like these. For in him we live and move and have our being. Amen.
I am weak. I need your love to free me. Oh Lord, my rock, my strength in weakness. Come rescue me, oh Lord. I cry out for your hand of mercy to heal me. I am weak. I need your love to free me, oh Lord, my rock, my strength in weakness. Rescue me, O Lord. You are my hope, your promise never fails me. And my desire is to follow you forever. For you are good, for you are good, for you are good to me. For you are good. For you are good, for you are good to me. I cry out for your hand of mercy to heal me. I am weak. I need your love to free me. Oh Lord, my rock, my strength in weakness. Come If you are able, kindly stand as together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers today will be Form H, found on page 120 in our prayer books, Form H. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. 
grant that they may serve, we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for Isabel Rekenya, William Hope, Bishop Lawrence DeCasio, Norma Gentle, Brenda Gabriel, Anna Mae Ferguson, Beth Sanchez, Brother Constancia Perez, Reverend Mario Moreira, Lena Williams, Barbara Bradley, Maud Williams, Elsie Evans, Cordelia Gardner, Leolyn Clare, Jean Longsworth, Dorothy Boudram, Lena Simmons, Hilda Mencias, Lincoln Bailey, Beryl Fairweather, Gwyneth Gillett, Betty Fairweather, Aaron Arms, Cynthia Gibbs, Ambrose Peters, Margaret Cab Mackenzie, Lincoln Gillett, Wilma Anthony, Louisa Wright Gill, Joyce Wade, Alma Wade, Father Eric and Verlin Richards, Canon Jerris Valentine, Rene Villanueva Sr., Ellison Flowers, George Bahadur, Earl Stewart, Lady Norma Young, Dr. Kenrick and Mrs. Marlene Lesson, Catherine Flowers, Beverly Ferguson, and all those for whom we offer our prayers. May God's healing grace and mercy be with all our sisters and brothers. We thank God for those who have and are recovering because of that divine grace. We continue to pray for God's protection during this hurricane season. We pray for the current conflict in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. Remember all those caught up in this war, those who have been killed, injured, or captured. We pray for peace and goodwill prevail. We also pray for those who have died, especially Kaver Kobe Smith, and all those we love and will miss. May they rest in peace. We ask for the consolation and strength of God's Holy Spirit to be with their families at this time. As we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Resistance Day tomorrow, we give God thanks for our Mestiza, Maya, and other indigenous sisters and brothers. May we be a united people. Together we build our nation. Traveling mercies to all on our roads this weekend. Whatever may be your need, know that God's loving presence and grace are sufficient to see you through. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we've asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another 
in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. and Keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We share that peace with each other. Let's bear the peace on earth as let it be given in me. Let's bear the peace on earth as yes, that was meant to be with God as our Father, children all are we. Let's walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live. As we prepare to receive the offering today, we take this opportunity to give thanks to you for your ongoing support of the Anglican Diocese of Belize with your prayers and contributions. Thanks to your support, we are able to continue with this good work that God has called us to do in this part of His vineyard. You can make your contributions to any of our accounts. Firstly, for the Belize Bank, our account numbers are 129-806-8800 one two zero 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 one or two three six three seven six zero one zero one two zero zero two five or you can pay using your eCash digital wallet via phone or tablet by scanning the QR code on your screen or clicking the link provided. You can also use our accounts at Atlantic Bank, account number 21064371, or all at the M&T Bank, number 1 Fountain Plaza, Buffalo, New York, account number 156980. Zero four. Once again, thank you very much for your support, and may God continue to bless you and your family. Members of Christ so we, He is our living head, that henceforth we should ever be by His good Spirit led, in the same narrow path, our Lord and Saviour taught, the path that leadeth by the cross to glory. Grace to us is here to kneel and pray. 
kingdom we inheritors were made. Each had the font in Christ's own robe of spotless white arrayed. Upon our forehead now is traced the suffering sign that one day on each saintly brow a glorious crown may shine. Christ, little ones, are we, and unto us are given angelic gods, whoever seek our Father's fits in them to walk in folly. goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Bless be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Rightly we give you thanks and praise, gracious God, for whom and through whom all things exist, because you made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. Long ago you spoke to us through the prophets, but now you have revealed yourself through your Son, heir of all things, reflection of your glory, and the exact imprint of your very being. Through him you sustain all creation by your powerful word. In him you have made purification for sins, as your servants, as your servant he tasted death for everyone. So we gladly thank you, with saints and angels and the whole host of heaven, singing your eternal song. Merciful Father, you sent your Son as the pioneer of our salvation. Though we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, we do see Jesus crowned with honor because of his suffering death. Through this holy meal in your company, show us Jesus today. In the midst of this congregation, raise up your spirit of love and joy and peace. Send that same Spirit on this bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, 
gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Transforming God, visit all today who dwell in the throes of suffering, sorrow, pain, or distress. Give them courage to withstand and patience to persist. Take away all that would prevent your children from coming to you and give your church grace to receive your kingdom like a little child. Receive into your arms of mercy any who have been dismissed or excluded or treated as objects of shame. Melt all hardness of heart into the wonder of a people united in your inseparable love until heaven and earth are joined in the banquet of your glory. Ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. promise you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him. We do not presume to come to this your table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. We are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord, ever the same, ever merciful. Grant therefore, Lord of grace and love, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that with bodies and souls made clean from every stain of sin, we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and your loved ones near or far this day, and remain with you always. Amen. First day greetings this week go to Ashner Daly, Owen Igwe, Pauline Emmanuel, Sarita White, Hermine Banks, Betteline Thompson, Dolores Cruz, Shannon Martinez, Charit Bonnell, Oscar Izeni, Elise Farrell, Dawn O'Brien, Harry Patrick, Brian Bob, Lena Jacob, Jean Bahadur, Omar Primus, 
Julia Castillo, Akila Hussein, Shalom Charles, Perth Regis, Steve Nemhard, Jacqueline Rue, Albert Jones, Bishop Armando Guerra, Reverend Reed Simon, Pastor Ashley Rock, Geraldine Young, Marcy Clare, Bishop Julio Martin, Jesse Crawford, Olivia Tasher, Pastor Lloyd Stanford, Bishop Orlando Segura, Chaplain Randy Hillman, Simon Wilshire, Kimberly Charlie, Heavenly Birthday Greetings go to Marjorie Lane, Dennis Ramcharan, Paul Beverly, Esme McKinstry, and Nilda Young. Indeed, may God's presence and his loving grace be with each and every one of you. We also join with those celebrating anniversaries at this time, be it their marriage anniversary, anniversary of ordination, anniversary of the passing a love of a loved one, or any other memorable occasion. May God continue to bless and keep you now and always. Amen. St. Hilda's Anglican Church in Georgeville, Cayo District, will be having a barbecue fundraiser. It will be held on Friday, 27 October, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Price, only $8. Delicious barbecue, St. Hilda's Anglican Church, Georgeville Village, Friday, 27 October, 2023. 23. And we invite you to save the date. It's a fundraiser event from St. Andrew's Parish Church in San, San Ignacio. The church presents the Bishop's Gala under the theme, A Night in Paris. Of course, it is going to be held on November 4th, 2023 at the San Ignacio Hotel Bedron Hall from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Dinner will be served between 8 and 9.30 p.m. Contribution, $100 per person, $190 per couple, and $750 per table of eight. St. Andrew's Anglican Church, San Ignacio presents Bishop Scala, November 4th, 2023, San Ignacio Hotel, Bedron Hall, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Look forward to seeing you there. We take this opportunity, of course, to express our gratitude for all those who helped to make this service possible. We, of course, thank God for his generous love and grace. We thank all those who participated in today's service, those who read lessons or contributed in other ways. We also thank the Diocesan Online Music Team, Mrs. Yvonne Sweet and the Sweet Chorale for their music, and the Diocesan Online Ministry Team for their support. Special thanks to Love FM for broadcasting our service. May God continue to richly bless each and every one of you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a safe, blessed and productive week. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Year of salvation, precious of God, born of His Spirit.
lips washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, Lord, as he This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, Lord, as he Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, noblest on my side, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.